morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's session of our Embroider Along with Cup of Cheer. This week, we are going to be tackling what looks like quite a bit, but it actually moves fairly quickly. We're going to be working on the wreath block. So the wreath is assembled in four separate embroidery designs. We're going to make the dimensional leaves that will get attached to the leaf after the whole quilt is assembled. Uh, we have the advent bow, the advent snowman, the advent candy cane, and the advent bird. These are all pieces that get added to the quilt as an advent daily piece. And then we have the filler blocks for section three, which is actually just one block. So let's just jump in here and get started. I do have a checklist for you as well uh, for this week's uh, embroidery designs. And we're gonna start with the wreath. We're gonna be using the five by seven large oval, or this will fit inside of the small clamp hoop. We're going to be using the light mesh cutaway stabilizer, so OESD poly mesh. The embroidery designs are centered um, on top of the quilting design and the finished blocks will be trimmed to a four and a half inch square. Once all four of these items are embroidered, uh, we are not going to sew them together. They belong in different sections, so don't get excited and sew them together. Uh, the base of the instructions are on page 30 of your booklet. We are going to take a look at creating this design. You'll see that there are four designs related to the wreath. All of them are slightly different, so don't just pick one and do it four times. We have the fourth one has the advent date on it, so it has the number 11 um, there for us which is that the one we're going to actually embroider here today. We are going to set up the design just like we have done in the past. So we're gonna open up the quilt design. I'm gonna to add to it one of the embroidery designs. I'm gonna go ahead and add the one that we're actually going to be embroidering here live. And because we didn't move the quilting, everything centers and drops right on top of the quilting exactly where it needs to be. Now, when we embroider this, the very last color stop of this design here, that's all related to quilting. We have the number, and then the very last color stop we're going to stitch. This is going to be a trimming line. We're going to stitch this, so this is going to tell us exactly where we want to trim this block to so that we can make sure that they all will meet, that our wreath branches will join up and meet each other in the appropriate location. So we always want to um, make sure that we um, get that stitched. Okay. It's, it's pretty much going to stitch right on top of the original tack down for the background fabric, but this is just in case for some reason you have fabric shrinkage or something moves, just a reinforcement that we are stitching in the right place. I've already completed the steps of quilting for the wreath block. It's the same as we've been doing for the last four weeks, so I went ahead and did that. The first color stop on the design is going to be the branch. So I'm gonna start with brown. We're then gonna to go to green for the leaves, red for the red berries, white for the white berries. I am going to stitch my number in black. And then I'll go back to the white to stitch the tack down uh, trim line that we have there. So let's work through all of the color stops of this design and then we will repeat with the next one.
now that our design is finished, we're going to take this out of the hoop. We're going to trim right along that last line that we just had stitched. We're gonna take the square orange pop ruler, the four and a half inch square, We're going to place it so that the trim line that just stitched is right on the inside of the orange pop. Okay, so that line that just stitched is right there along the inside. And then pops up just like that. And then if we Take a look through the magic here. Repeat this process with the other three wreath hoopings, and then you will have your wreath that we will use for our unit. Now do not, again, do not sew these together, okay? Don't worry, like, see how they connect here at the top, but they don't here, that's okay. We have other leaves that we're gonna make that are gonna get attached here. But do not sew this together yet because we will be um, putting each of these in different sections of the quilt. So we don't want to join them together quite yet. Next up, now that our wreath is finished, is going to be our candy cane. The candy cane is a, a three-dimensional or a freestanding piece that is going to be used on... Uh, day 13, it's, he slides into the mug that we made last week, the pocket, <clears throat> excuse me, of last week's mug. So for this little guy, we're going to be using the large oval hoop with wash away stabilizer. Okay. You're also going to need your felt bases. You're going to need the red embroidery topping that... Um, we'll need let's go here. So we're going to need our two pieces of white felt. We're going to need our matching piece of flexi foam and a piece of red embroidery topping. Okay. We're going to go ahead. We're going to load the design on the machine. Open up the candy cane. Go ahead, and we're going to pop our stabilizer into the hoop. We're going to run a placement line. We're going to place our flexi foam completely covering it. We're then going to tack our flexi foam down and then we're going to trim it. Now, once your flexi foam is trimmed, we're going to return the design to the machine. The next color stop is going to show us where to place the um, felt at one piece of felt. I'm going to skip that color stop because I kind of have an idea and I know this felt is plenty big enough. I went ahead and I skipped that color stop. The designs on the machine. I'm going to take this piece of felt. I'm going to completely cover all of that foam and we're going to tack this in place. All right. Changed out to red thread. We're gonna take the piece of red embroidery topping. We're gonna to place it on top of the felt. And I'm gonna tape it in place. The purpose of this topping is to kind of provide a color barrier so that as we stitch these red stripes, the white isn't gonna show through. It'll be the red that kind of shows through any sort of openings. And I'm gonna go ahead and run the next color stop. The stitching is finished for the red stripes. We're going to go ahead and take the hoop off the machine. We're going to bring it over to a surface and we're going to tear away the red topping. I'm also going to go ahead and change my machine back to white thread. I didn't use 
give the, the embroidery topping, then what would happen is you would see some of, probably see some of the white felt show through the red stitching. If there were any sort of gaps or anything like that. Turn the hoop over to the wrong side. I'm going to take my other piece of felt, place it on the back side of the hoop, and we're going to tape it in place. We are going to return the hoop to the machine. We're going to stitch the final color stop, which is going to stitch a cutting line for us. When the design is done, we're going to come over, we're going to take it out of the hoop, and we're going to trim. Now, the line it just stitched was the tack down to hold the backing piece on. It's the one right next to all the candy cane stripes. We're actually going to cut on the original outer line that stitched back at the beginning that hold, held the felt to the um, stabilizer. So I'm going to locate my scissors, not the pair I want to use, but don't know where the other ones are. And we're going to trim right on that outer line of stitching. Now in the book and in your instructions, she talks about um, remove any excess stabilizer <clears throat> around the edge with because it's wash away. My wash away is white. I'm not going to worry about it, you can't see it. And then there's your candy cane. Now, just like the candy cane comes our next design, which is the snowman. I'm not gonna stitch him here because I've already stitched him because he is just like what we just did. So we're going to open up the little snowman design. We're going to run the placement line for the foam. We will tack the foam in place. And then this is the placement line for your felt. Lay your felt over top of your foam. Tack your felt down. Do his nose, his eyes. Attach the piece of felt to the wrong side of the hoop. And then run the final color stop. And once you run the final color stop, you can then remove the project from the hoop and trim them down so you'll have your little snowman just like this little guy. Okay. He fits in a medium hoop with the wash away stabilizer. And he is part of day 10. He fits into, he's designed to go into the mitten that we made last week. All right, next up for our design is we're going to work on the Advent bird. This little guy goes to the snowman that we did back a few weeks ago. He fits inside of a medium hoop. We're going to be using wash away stabilizer. We have our foam, our two pieces of fabric, our one piece of regular felt. And then you need that piece of felt that we did last week that we attached a Velcro dot to. Okay, so you wanna get out that Velcro dot piece that we labeled bird and set him to the side because we're gonna need him as well. Now with our bird, we're gonna be working through the same techniques as we've done. We are going to tack down 
um, placement line for our foam, tack the foam down, and then trim the foam, and then we will place our felt over top, and then start working through appliquing all of the parts of our bird. Okay, I'm going to start out with the white thread still in the machine here. And we're going to work through appliquing and trimming the foam. When I return the hoop to the machine, ready to applique the felt, I am going to stitch, I am going to skip color stop three. That's our placement line for felt. I'm going to skip that. I'm going to take the piece of felt that does not have the Velcro attached, okay, the plain piece of felt, and we're going to put him over top of our foam and we will tack him down. We're now going to work through the steps of appliquing our bird body and his hat and doing his decorative stitching. Because all of these appliques are going to be held down with a decorative stitch, I am going to make sure that I run my placement lines and my tack downs in the same color that I plan to do my placement, my decorative stitch with. This way, nothing will um, show through my decorative outline. So we're gonna run the placement line. I'm gonna take my body fabric, lay it right side up. Well, it's solid, there is no right or wrong. I'm gonna lay it on top of that placement line and then tack it in place. Tacked in place, I'm going to trim close to that stitching line just the fabric. Don't cut the felt. We're going to return this to the machine and run the decorative outline. Now we're going to work through the same steps here with the coral colored thread and the coral colored fabric appliquing on our bird's Now, once your hat is appliqued on and cover stitched, we're going to work through the final color stops of the design. We're going to stitch his wing and his pom-pom, which I'm going to be doing in the same color, just like the picture. We then have his eye and then his beak. Now, after his beak is complete, uh, we're going to then place the white felt with the Velcro attached on the back of the hoop. Once you've finished the, all of the wing, the pom-pom, his eye and his beak, we're going to take the hoop off the machine. We're going to come over and place the piece of felt on the back that contains the piece of Velcro. And we're just going to kind of center him over the design. Okay, there's not really a right or wrong place for that to be. We just want to make sure that the Velcro is inside of the bird. Okay, I'm going to make sure he's somewhere inside of that foam. And that your felt covers all of that outer felt line. Tape this in place. I've gone back to white thread on the machine. I am going to return this to the machine. We are going to stitch the final color stop, which is going to stitch these two pieces of felt together.
once that is stitched on, we can go ahead and take that off the machine. Again, the Velcro dot is inside of that stitched line, so we're good there. We can take this out of the hoop, and just like we did with the candy cane and the snowman, we're going to cut right on that outer stitching line to create our advent bird. Now, after your bird is complete, we're going to repeat the same steps doing the advent bow. The advent bow goes in a medium 4x4 four four hoop using wash away stabilizer in the, um, in the hoop. You have your base felt and you have a piece of felt with a Velcro dot attached to it that you prepped last week. Okay, so you've labeled it bow. I have gone ahead, let's get this. Way. You're going to do the bow uses a piece of red velveteen and a piece of solid red fabric. And you're going to work through all the same steps that we just did here with our bird. We're going to do with the bow, and that Velcro dot is on the back side. Just so you can see. The Advent Bow will get applied to our wreath on day 11. It says here's what the bow design looks like. I did all of my foam tack down and my felt tack down were done in white. So this is my placement line, placed my foam, tacked my foam down, trimmed my foam, then I skipped Color stop three, which was the placement line for the felt. I went ahead and placed my felt down and went right to the felt tack down. This is just felt on top. I then switched over to red thread after my white felt was tacked in place. I stitched the placement line for the red velveteen. Place my red velveteen down over top of that placement line, completely covering it, tacked it down, trimmed it, then ran the placement line for the red solid fabric, laid that down, tacked it down, trimmed it, and then ran the final color stop um, for the cover stitching. Once the red cover stitching was complete, Took the hoop off the machine, centered the Velcro loop um, piece, the piece with the Velcro attached, the backing felt, um, kind of centered over my, the center of my um, bow on the back side, and then returned that to the machine and ran the final color stop. And then once the colors, and then once the color stop was complete, took it out of the hoop and did my trimming. Okay, And that is our advent bow that will get applied to the wreath on day 11. Now, next up is going to be the dimensional leaves. Now, these are the leaves that get applied to the um, wreath once we get the wreath assembled into the quilt. You're going to load this design in a four by four hoop with wash away thread. Same green thread on top as in the bobbin. Okay. So you can see this is what the design looks like. We are going to very easily, we're going to work through appliquing down the piece of felt. So placement line, tack down, stitch the leaves. Once the leaves are stitched, this is what it looks like. Okay, You'll take that out of the hoop. I trimmed up my excess stabilizer from around the edge. You can go ahead if you want and soak the full sheet to remove this 
stabilizer from the back side, or you can wait until you trim all these little leaves. Now, when you trim these leaves, you're gonna be trimming them an eighth to a quarter of an inch away from that stitched line, okay? Do not cut directly on that line, okay? So, you can see they're gonna get applied to our wreath in those open areas right there, and we're gonna be trimming that eighth to a quarter inch away from that edge. Okay. So those are the dimensional leaves. And again, make sure that you do that with your th same thread in the top as it is in the bobbin. Next up is quilting. Quilting for section three is one square, okay? Um, it's going to use the six by six design with lines vertical. So we're gonna open up the vertical. Let's get the right hoop on here. There we go. So this will fit in a maxi or a medium clamp hoop. We're gonna load in the quilt design and we're gonna follow the same steps as we've done in the previous months with quilting the filler blocks. Okay, here is the filler block. Note that the fabric for this filler block is directional. So however you place him in the hoop, just be happy with the way that the lines are going to go because you're probably going to want him to go into the quilt with the houses standing upright. So if you did put the houses in um, sideways for quilting and then turned it upright to put it in the quilt, your lines may not go in the manner in which you want, but that is completely up to you. Okay. That is what we have for this week. Okay, so this week you have your four leaf wreath blocks. That's hard to say multiple times. So four blocks all done identically, but use four different designs. You're gonna be quilting that one background filler. You have your Snowman and candy cane. Okay, those are no Velcro dots on the back sides of them. Okay, they're just felt. We have our dimensional leaves that I'm going to soak and then cut. And then you have your two units, the bird and the bow, that are done with the Velcro dot or hook and loop backing that we made last week. All right, well, that is what I have for you today. I think it, it went a little quicker uh, stitching out these blocks this week than it did last week with all those um, projects that had two hoopings associated with them. Happy stitching this week, and I'll see you back here next week for the next set of blocks that we're going to be doing in our Cup of Cheer quilt. Have a great week, everyone.